and welcome back to No Kidding News. I'm Bruno and I'm here to keep you informed but also engaged. Over the next two weeks we're going to be looking at one of the most topical issues of our time, climate change. This week we'll introduce the topic and explain the steps some governments around the globe are taking to protect our environment. Next week we'll talk about what industries, companies and individuals can do to help. Climate change has been a topic of discussion for several decades, but there are still people out there who don't believe it's real. Scientists now say that we're coming close to a point of no return, and lots of people are pushing for their government to take action. This week, we're joined by our guest Lorenzo, who's passionate about the subject and will help us understand it better. Lorenzo, welcome. Let's start with some basics. What is climate change? Hi, Bruno. Thank you for having me. Climate change refers to both global warming and the resulting long-term changes to Earth's weather patterns. Global warming is caused by the burning of fossil fuels like oil and coal. These fuels release the so-called greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, where they trap the sun's heat and cause the Earth to heat up. What do you mean by burning fossil fuels? How do we use them in our day-to-day lives? Fossil fuels are used extensively in our daily modern lives for producing energy, such as electricity, transportation, heating our homes, and also used by the majority of product manufacturing. Gosh, that covers a lot of how we live. Are there any other parts of the 21st century living which badly impact the environment? This greenhouse effect is intensified by other human activities such as farming and deforestation because these actions reduce the number of trees and contribute to soil erosion. Trees and soil are vital in fighting climate change as they absorb carbon dioxide, which is the primary greenhouse gas. According to one study, deforestation accounts for 10% of global warming and loads of other environmental issues. The Earth's average surface temperature has risen about 1 degree Celsius since 1900. And what is more worrying still is the temperature is rising even more in the vulnerable polar regions and the change has been concentrated in the last few decades. Okay, but one degree doesn't seem like a lot. Does it really do that much damage? Well, while this temperature change may not seem like much, it is enough to wreak havoc in climates around the world. Ice caps are melting faster, The thaw is coming sooner, plants and animals are waking up from dormant periods earlier, animal migrations are starting sooner, warmer sea temperatures are killing coral reefs, and glaciers are shrinking. These climate change consequences can knock whole ecosystems out of whack. On top of that, we are seeing extreme weather events taking place more frequently. We are talking about landslides, floods, and intense wildfires. This is our reality, and we need to find more sustainable ways to live in harmony with our Earth. Countries' environmental policies often flip-flop according to who happens to be in charge. Of course, this is a matter of public policy, as well as what we can do as private citizens. So, what are policies our governments putting in place? Let's take America as an example. As some of you may remember from my very first podcast about the US election, and if you don't, this is your chance to go back and smash the like button. No kidding. Jokes aside, President Donald J. Trump and Joe Biden disagreed completely on immigration, taxes, health care, and the environment. During his time in office, President Trump left the Paris Agreement and scrapped President Obama's clean power plan. As a consequence, there has been increased oil and gas drilling, which led to to them reaching energy independence. President Trump also did not publicly acknowledge that climate change may have a catastrophic impact on our planet. In contrast, President Biden's environmental plan is believed to be the most extensive climate change reform policy that the United States has ever seen. There has also been unprecedented resources including taxpayer funds, which will be devoted to renewable energy and reducing carbon emissions. This is important because the US has a huge environmental footprint, as well as being the world's economic superpower. 
It is also likely that other countries will respond by adopting similar stances as a result of these changes in policy. So, America's sweeping changes to the direction of environmental policy could impact the whole world. And now, Biden has rejoined the Paris Agreement. Lorenzo, can you explain simply to our listeners what this agreement is about? The Paris Agreement is an international pact made by nearly every nation back in 2015 to mitigate the effects of climate change. One of its most important goals is to keep global warming in check by limiting further temperature rises to under 2 degrees Celsius, but ideally under 1.5 degrees. To achieve this, the agreement includes commitments for the major climate change polluters to reduce their emissions. While some are skeptical that the agreement doesn't go far enough, it is a much needed start in combating climate change. Can you tell us some more about what the US and other countries are doing specifically to limit temperature rises and reduce emissions? Great question, Bruno. Let's look at China, the USA and India specifically, since they are the top CO2 emitting countries. Together, they account for 50% of all emissions globally. Last September, President Xi Jinping of China announced that he was introducing more vigorous policies and measures. China aims to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. In the U.S., President Biden is taking steps to achieve a pollution-free power sector by 2035 and a net-zero economy by 2050. He is making the climate crisis part of U.S. national security and foreign policy considerations and advancing conservation and sustainable agriculture. In India, the focus is to build out its renewable energy capacity to meet its future energy needs, including bringing solar power to rural areas as well as working on various water preservation initiatives. And here in the UK, the government is also working hard to combat climate change through its focus on inexpensive and affordable energy for everyone. It seems like there's a lot still to be done in order to turn around public policy and our individual behaviours in order to help our environment. If you want to dig deeper into climate change, we highly recommend watching David Attenborough's documentary, A Life on Our Planet, or Kiss the Ground, which can be both found on Netflix. Let's give a big thank you to Lorenzo from Latimer School for coming to the show today. Don't forget to tune in next week when we'll be talking about how two of the most environmentally damaging industries, fashion and motoring, are turning around and adapting to begin leading the world to a more sustainable future. Why not check out our website, nokiddingnews.com. You can also follow us on YouTube and many other major platforms. No kidding. See you next time. Until then, take care and thank you for listening.